Hi, my name is Annie Shank. You're listening to CIDI 99.1 FM. So to give you a little background, I was born in Thetford Mines. Uh, we moved to Montreal and eventually Florida. Moved back to Montreal, back to Florida, Texas, San Francisco, and found myself back here in Quebec in Lac Brome now. I wanted to move home. I really love home. And I found this building uh, about three years ago and decided to renovate. And so now it really does feel like home. So I was driving by and I saw this building for sale. It was an old Chinese restaurant and it just pulled me in. I kept driving by, seeing the sale sign and something told me, you know, check out this building. Because I was doing my glass at home, had uh, a quite a large studio in my house, and but I had expanded into the garage and then into another garage. And in the summers, I was standing outside and in the, with the garden hose and it, you had to set up and uh, break it down and set back up and it was becoming very hard to operate. Uh, you didn't really want to do hard things that required a lot of setup if you had to break it all down two hours later. And I saw this building for sale and I thought, hmm, let's check that out. Uh, the building was quite dilapidated, to use a word, and um, very dirty. Uh, but it had a great roof, and it had four cement walls, and I could see the future of glass in that building. I just knew that that was the building for me. Um, bought the building. It took, uh, oh my God, it took 10 months to get permission from the town. But uh, after a long struggle and some work with an architect to design my dream studio, here I am. And uh, with COVID, the building took a little longer than it should have, but we opened, or I should say I opened, in about February. I was completely ready to roll, and which gave me all winter to work and catch up and set up and get ready to roll with what I wanted to do. So I started doing glass because I wanted to travel with my husband. We got married and he was, uh, he, he is a world famous artificial intelligence expert. He uh, was a professor at Yale most of his life, Stanford, Northwestern and uh, he was being invited all over the world to give speeches and work on AI problems and I was accompanying him but I couldn't do that if I held down a nine to five or a regular job. So it allowed me to do what I really, really always wanted to do which was art. And I've been a sculptor and a painter and a weaver and I've tried every, every kind of medium. Um, and one day, just by luck, a flyer came to the house and it was night school at the high school. And they had a course in stained glass and I thought, wow, that would be fun. I haven't tried glass, let's try glass. So I talked my best friend into going with me because the high school was in a little rough area and I wasn't sure I wanted to be there late at night. And she said no, but after a lot of convincing, because I can be very convincing, uh, talked her into going with me. We got there and the professor was so slow and boring. She said, after about two hours, I'm done. I gotta leave. I, I couldn't win that battle. So we went home. I took the project and the little outline of how to do glass. I finished it in one day, ran to the local glass studio and went, ta-da! And they went, oh, okay. And I thought, okay, no, no, no. I can do better than this. So that got me started and I uh, started doing stained glass. After about a year and a half of doing stained glass, I thought, this is boring, now what? There was a little kiln for sale at the same glass store and I thought, okay, I'll buy a kiln and I'll try some warm glass. Um, and uh, made my first bowl. And it's actually all, all here in my studio. I never sold it because I thought it was so cool. And um, it really turned out pretty good and I thought I might be able to do this so uh, that was about 17 years ago and I've uh, stretched into mosaic and um, I've tried blowing wasn't for me but uh, now I do mosaic warm glass meaning kiln fused glass and mosaic
Now I found that uh, the, the weaving and the pottery and things like that were very interesting, but a glass just grabbed a hold of me and, and it just, it never left my soul. And I guess it, I, it was always there. I just hadn't found it yet. And now that I've found it, it's just, it's, it's who I am. It's what I want to be. And it, I won't, I'm a glass artist. People often ask me, well, what do you do when you go there? How do you, how does your day unfold? So um, it's, it's usually the same thing. I walk in, uh, I'm kind of like Mr. Rogers. I take my, my little, whatever I'm, coat, overcoat, sweater off, and I put my little jacket on. So I, you gotta wear a jacket doing this because otherwise you get really dirty. And I changed my shoes to work shoes because you don't want to cut your feet. And uh, my dog comes to the studio with me every day. He's got his little bed. I make a cup of coffee. I turn on the TV. I turn on music, very inspired by music. And uh, I just start my day and see what, what I feel like doing that day. I never walk in and say, okay, tonight I'm going to do, um, I'm working on the shadow front. Uh, today I'm on the shadow front. I, I walk in and I have my coffee and I look around and I think, okay, today I feel like X, I'm gonna work on X. I basically find inspiration for my art today by travel, what's happening in my life, different experiences. We went to, on, on one of the trips with my husband, we happened to go to Siberia and uh, Russian dolls were everywhere and I thought, gee, I wonder if I could do some Russian dolls in glass. So I came home and I worked on cast glass, which was, uh, a sculpture that you made in wax first and then uh, embedded into plaster and fiberglass and made a mold. And then you put glass billets or chunks in a pot up above and it melts into the mold that you made. So I started uh, um, basically focusing on what was happening in my life as far as inspiration. Uh, sometimes you get my animals uh, because they're important to me, my dog, my turkeys. I raise turkeys and chickens, so there's a lot of chickens in my art. There's a lot of Quebec in my art. I'm doing the Shadow Front Neck right now because it's, again, it's home. I love home. I would say other artists inspire me by uh, mostly color. Color is, is a, a lot of what drives me and I, I like to experiment with it. And I have a friend here in town who's a painter, an oil painter, and she paints a lot of flowers. And if she's using um, purples and pinks and blues, I, I, I notice I will go back and pull out purple, pink, and blue glass and play with purple, pink, and blue glass. Just, just like the autumn leaves in the fall, you'll find a lot of my art has yellow and gold and harvest colors because it's, it's what expires. It's what's happening around me. So if I meet an artist and I see their work, sometimes I'll translate what they're into in, into my work. My favorite work of art, I would say, it is my mosaic of a dog uh, that I did about four years ago. It's an anthropomorphized dog uh, in a smoking jacket, smoking a pipe. I usually make things and sometimes I make them to sell right away. Sometimes I get so in love with them I can't quite sell them. Sometimes I keep them around for a couple of years and sell them. I swore I'd never sell the dog because the dog was just, it just, it was, it, it was for me. I made it for me from the very beginning and I probably won't sell it. Well, we're in a time of COVID now, and so COVID has is, is, is certainly impacted me. Um, but I would say, for the most part, it's been a great thing. <laughs> I know that sounds crazy, but any artist appreciates time. And time alone is, is, is the best, because you can get into your head like you can't when the phone is ringing and people are popping in. So COVID was a great thing, especially with my studio just being finished. It gave me a chance to really explore, uh, put my studio together the way I wanted it to be put together and, and go in depth with a lot of things I haven't been able to do. Um, so I would say, gee, thanks COVID. <laughs> so that's the positive side of COVID. There's also a negative side of COVID, of course, along with what it's done to 
the population and, and how we live. Uh, it, as far as sounds a little selfish to say, but it slowed down my building process quite a bit. Um, wasn't able to get the things I needed to finish the building, especially on the outside and uh, getting plants and materials and lighting. Uh, instead of taking four to six weeks, it's now 12, 18 weeks. So the outside of my building isn't done yet. I have no landscaping, I have no parking, I have no signage, or I have these wonderful patios coming and I wanna put fencing up with my glass in it, but because of COVID, we're still waiting, or I'm still waiting. As most of you watching probably already know stained glass has been around forever and glass blowing has been around forever. Uh, warp glass was a, kind of a movement that started in the 70s in Oregon and California and it's evolved over time. The, the number of people doing it uh, got bigger and bigger uh, but I think today with the affordability of the equipment, like the kilns, and you don't need a whole lot of tools. Uh, it's allowed people to, who, the, we've got a lot of boomers retiring, looking for things to do. It's allowed them to buy a kiln, put it in their home, and play and express their creativity in an interesting, fun way, other than just buying a canvas and painting like a lot of people do. It, 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 so the industry has, has changed and evolved because you've got a lot more people doing it. So you have a lot more people without having to be experts and just playing. And again, more happy accidents and things have been developed in the field that perhaps maybe wouldn't have if we didn't have so many newcomers. And that's a wonderful thing. I think that, I think it's great. I don't think everything should be just um, the, the, the guy who knows how to do it the best, it, it, it's a wonderful thing. I find that when you do glass, you, especially with warm glass, it's, it's, there's a lot of chemistry involved and sometimes opening the kiln in the morning is like Christmas morning, you don't know what you're gonna get. And you open that package and sometimes you're pleasantly surprised and sometimes you just aren't. And so there are a lot of uh, mistakes and um, sometimes mistakes are the best art. And I found that in doing precision work, sometimes if you mess up the precision, it comes out better than you started. I use a lot of, I do, I pull some glass and I get what I call noodles. It looks just like spaghetti, but it's glass. And I got into doing a lot of um, striped plates with the spaghetti. And one morning I was, working on laying all these beautiful noodles together in a perfect alignment. <clears throat> I put them in the kiln, expecting to get this beautiful striped plate out, and oh my God, like, I forgot to use glue to glue down my noodles, and the noodles had all separated and pulled apart, yet some of them were still stuck together. And it was just the most happy accident. I ended up with something that I hadn't seen before, something that I know nobody else had done in glass or I don't think is doing in glass. So yeah, accidents are great. Accidents can really propel you forward better sometimes than uh, reading a book and, and trying to learn a new technique. I'm always working on more than one thing. Um, because I'm a mosaicist and a, and a warm glass artist and a stained glass artist sometimes if I have to, um, I've always got four or five projects going at once. I'll have a mosaic going and I'll have a fused glass project and sometimes a cast glass project. And if I lose focus on one or I spend too many hours on one, I, I get blocked and I have to move on. So I'll move on to one of the other projects. Sometimes I just have to walk away to, I find uh, I get burned out a little bit on, uh, not on glass per se, but on what I'm working on and I need to go out into nature or into my surroundings and, and be inspired again. Also another way I get inspired and I get brought back to what I'm working on is dreams. I, movies are a wonderful thing and movies will get me to dream and then I get so excited because I wake up in the morning and I think, oh my God, I just dreamt the greatest thing. Now I gotta go in the studio and, and, and make that. So. Um, whenever I'm blocked, I just take a break, 
move on to something else or go walk away. And I always find I come back with a, a better approach or a, a different way of looking at things. People often ask me about starting in glass and what would I tell them if, or how would I advise them to start in glass. And I always say, just get the stuff and go. And don't listen to anybody, uh, just play. The best thing to do is play, get the supplies. If you need to, you can read a, a little book on how to cut glass because that's always, it's always a good skill, but you don't really have to know how to cut glass, to diffuse glass especially mosaic. Mosaic is broken pieces. For, so it's, it's a very forgiving area of, of art. And um, just put down what comes to you, what's in your heart. And I always find, I teach a lot, I always find that somewhere halfway between whatever my, whatever my student is making, they'll have some kind of a crisis or a breakdown. I'll say, but but it's not right and it doesn't look like yours and it, it, I didn't do this right and I didn't do that right. I said, everybody, including me, hates what they do at some point. You're, you're in the way halfway through and you think, oh, this is terrible. Always finish what you're doing because in the end, it will transform and it will come out. It might not be the greatest thing you ever made, but it'll be yours and it'll be what you were feeling at the time and so, the best advice I can give anybody who wants to do art is just buy the stuff and start and do it and see what happens. You can always go back and take a class later or you can expand, read a book, and, and you don't know what you don't know until you start and you try. So I tend to be more of a come and see type of artist. Um, you're always welcome in my studio. You want to see what I'm doing, come and see. Or um, I will, I often have pieces in galleries or shows, and uh, most galleries, most shows will do advertising. I also do um, a show once a year, or I try to do a show once a year. Uh, the show will last uh, two weeks long. I'm open for those two weeks a year. If I was open every day of the week, um, I wouldn't get anything done because the door would ring all the time. So I tend to work for the entire year and then expose for two weeks. And that's, that's usually the best place. I do have a website, but eh. I would like to acknowledge the support of the Official Language Minority Community Media Consortium and the Government of Canada for the Community Media Strategic Support Plan.